Segment three, Golden Black Live. Uh, thanks to Evan Boudreau for joining us for segment two. It's Purdue Center for Cancer Research Day, but uh, Tim Ratliff and his role, uh, and Tim is our guest here, as I should introduce in segment three, uh, and, and has been so involved with the Center for Cancer Research for a long time. Give us a little, uh, uh, our, our listeners and viewers, a little bit of an elevator speech of, of your time at Purdue. Uh, it could take a while because of all your accomplishments, but where you came from and how you got, to, how you got involved with the Center for Cancer Research here at Purdue. Well, it's an interesting story, Alan. Uh, I started out at Washington University School of Medicine, got my first academic appointment there, and uh, worked there in St. Louis for a number of years, and then went to the Carver Medical School in, uh, at the University of Iowa. I yeah. was working there. Um, I was an endowed uh, professor of prostate cancer research and uh, part of the Cancer Center, the Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center uh, at the uh, University of Iowa. And uh, I was really enjoying myself. And then I get this uh, phone call. They said, hey, we've got a, a position over at Purdue to run their cancer center. And I said, well, I'm not interested. <laughs> and uh, that was kind of the end of that. And uh, they called back and the same kind of conversation. Uh, then they called back a third time. And I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to get them off my back. <laughs> and I, so I talked to my wife, Jackie, and uh, she said, yeah, go ahead and take a look at it. And uh, so I, of all things, from Iowa City to West Lafayette or Indianapolis, I flew. Yeah. Uh, so it took me eight hours because there's no direct flight. There's uh, I had to connect and then get here and then was picked up and brought to uh, West Lafayette. It was eight hours total travel time. In that travel time, I was kicking myself for wasting a whole day. Yeah. Uh, it was really kind of crazy. And then, uh, you know, really got engaged with the faculty here at Purdue. And, man, it's just unbelievable the strength of this faculty. I was just so impressed. And so when I flew in, I was wondering why I came. When I flew out, I was just hoping they called me back. And fortunately, they did. So that was great, uh, really a, kind of an odd experience, but I'm certainly glad uh, to have been called back to this position. Well, and you have, a, have, have had a very, very uh, uh, distinguished career, but your career has been so much involved. You know, the Wallace Miller Director of the Purdue Center for Cancer, Center for Cancer Research, but it has a lot to do with just, you know, being involved and being, uh, you know, finding a way to get the message out on, on, on not only uh, research, cancer research, but Purdue's role. And Purdue's role is, you know, I know you've told this story many times, but it's different because Purdue does not have a medical school. Uh, that's one, one part of this, but your role in research and in cancer research makes this a little bit of a different entity at a school that is obviously renowned for its science and ability, but not at a medical school. Yeah, and you know, it's an advantage to us not to have a medical school. I know that sounds a little bit strange, but you know, we have a lot of drugs that we're developing. We're among the leaders in the country in drug development and uh, new technology, our engineers and really developing new imaging technology and getting the end of the clinic. I mean, if we were bound by a medical school here, we would really be obligated to utilize our own faculty and so what we are able to do is find the faculty who really have the greatest expertise in a particular area and engage them. And we see that as a real advantage uh, to, to really getting the technology into the clinic and evaluating it and determining whether it's really useful or not. Yeah, that's been a big, big part of, uh, of the growth and, uh, and the impact that you've made. Athletics has been a part of this because it's a way, one way, one part is it's a way to get the word out about the center, but also your involvement has, has gone on. And one of the things that's going on tomorrow, a virtual 5K, folks will have a, have a, uh, we have a tag on our site of where folks can, can sign up. We've had the center for the Purdue Challenge, I think dating all the way back to 2008, had to take a, a spring off obviously in 2020, but you came back with a, with a virtual race. Tell us about that and, the, and also that importance of the money that that raises for uh, research here at Purdue. Well, the challenge, as you say, started in 2008 and has grown every year. We 
have uh, the last couple of years have raised around 150,000. And then, you know, we were in the middle of planning for 2020, yeah. April 2020, and COVID 19 hit us. And, uh, well, we had to cancel. And, uh, you know, the funds that are generated, 100% of those funds go to research activities. Uh, we have actually started an endowment. So some of the funds will go into an endowment, but the yield from that endowment is used solely for research activities. And so it's very important for us to, to have these funds to fund new ideas and new, new technology and new drugs and move them forward. So the challenge and the fundraising component is very important, but also it's just really fun. You know, yeah. I mean, the crowds out there, uh, they love being together. People are really committed to defeating this disease. And, you know, as I kind of went around, uh, I would walk through the course and things and talk to people. And boy, they're just so excited about the opportunity to talk about defeating cancer and uh, to help our center move forward and move our technology forward. It was really a very rewarding experience. And then with the cancellation, of course, uh, we still need the funds to move our, our research forward. So we have planned this virtual race and uh, it goes through the 14th. So uh, anybody can sign up and make donations, uh, develop a team and, and raise funds around that team, uh, but have fun, you know, get, a, yeah. get some people together. And, and if you walk or if you just, uh, you know, have some, snacks together or whatever uh, just think about what you're doing and how you're helping your fellow man by helping us do our research and move our technology forward it's very important to us so yeah i hope more i hope you all will really commit to to getting out there and and, and helping us out yeah for tomorrow's day you know the football game is until 7 30 so you've got plenty of time Heck, it's day, day, daylight these days is over at 545, so a uh, great chance to be involved. And, and, uh, and I think, you know, it's all, and I've been involved with this race since it started. It's, it's our, now almost our dream to get back to, to where we were in 2019. We had, we've had a couple events where we finished on the field at Ross 8 Stadium. Last year, we, were, we had had it all set to finish at the Tyler Trent gate because of the, of what was being done on the, uh, at the South end zone. But now that monstrosity scoreboard is done. So when we get back to doing it live and in person, it, it will be bigger and better than ever. I, I really believe that. And I think that's the other thing that's really important about it is, is that exactly what you said, it is an emotional event for people because cancer is impacted just about everybody and about half the people that participate in it walk in it. You know, so it's not always, a, it's, it is a race and there are serious racers that come to it, but there are people like myself that just like to go and run it hard and, and, and enjoy uh, seeing where I stand. So it is a great event. And, you know, the thing too is, you know, you've been through, you've had three different coaches, but they've all been very supportive of it. Danny Hope certainly was, Daryl Hazel was, and now Jeff Brom. Talk about that relationship and, and the need to kind of tie in with what not only Purdue Athletics, but Purdue's football program. Oh, it's a tremendous relationship. I, I mean, you you mentioned finishing on the field and having the scoreboard there, and there's everybody across the finish line. They could see themselves on the jumbotron. It was really great. But athletics, they were all there, you know, and they were mingling with all the folks and talking with the folks and giving autographs. I mean, it's a tremendous relationship uh, from uh, the level of interaction from the players up. Uh, to the coaches who are really committed. They support us uh, financially. They support us in getting the word out about what we're doing. We've got, they've developed some videos that are active now, uh, maybe on YouTube. Or, yeah, they are. You know, and, uh, you know, they're really trying to help us uh, raise the money we need to make a difference and really defeat this disease. But let me uh, tell you one other thing, you know, as, as I was walking, uh, at the child, the last challenge in 2019, uh, and years before too, there are people on chemotherapy that <clears throat> are really committed to finishing that race. And some of those folks are being treated and they're weak and 
but th I'm telling you, they've got a team out there. They, a lot of them have their own t-shirts and things like that. And they're going to finish that race no matter what. And yeah. you know, what, I mean, that is so moving. I, yeah, I just can't tell you. It is. It really is the most, uh, it's an emotional morning. Uh, I, I don't know what, any other way better to describe it. It just is, uh, it is a very special event. And, and uh, that uh, makes it, because everybody's pulling in the same direction in this country, sometimes we don't see a lot of that. So that part of it is, that part of it is such a, such an important part of what this is. So if you're interested for tomorrow's race, there's still plenty of time. All you gotta do is sign up Purdue Virt just search Purdue Virtual 5K, uh, the Purdue Center for Cancer Research. You'll find a registration and you can make a big difference by, by being a part of that as well. You know, one of the other interesting, obviously we're still mired and still trying to work on, uh, on finding not only a vaccine, but treat effective treatments for COVID-19. But the center's had a role in that as well. You've got some great researchers uh, involved with that. Tell us a little bit about what that, what, how that has not only impacted uh, your, your work re regarding cancer, but also your work looking to, to try to, to work on the COVID-19 issue. Sure, well, you know, uh, COVID shut down the university and that shut down most of our laboratories, but the laboratories that um, were, had essential work to accomplish were able to remain open under really very strict SOPs. Yeah. And among those uh, were a group of our a scientist who had who developed drugs, um, and so they have focused their efforts on developing therapeutics for COVID, and uh, have consulted uh, with others in developing uh, vaccines with some of the companies, uh, Pfizer being one. And this vaccine yeah. was about ready. Some of our scientists were consulting with them and helping them along. And uh, so they're at, their labs remain wide open. We're still developing new therapeutics for it. There are ways to kind of block the virus from uh, growing. And our scientists understand that really very well and are developing these agents that will block the pathways associated with their growth. So we uh, are excited about those therapeutics, but we're also excited about the vaccines. We've got a couple of folks working on vaccines here too. And uh, plus we're consulting and helping companies like Pfizer move their vaccine forward. So we've been very active in our cancer research. Uh, and, and I'm happy to say that June 1, uh, uh, all of our labs were able to begin to open back up. We all submitted uh, SOPs to, to really strictly manage uh, potential exposures, reduce the numbers in our lab, staggered how they worked, and you know, all those things, wear masks and social distance and do all the things we're supposed to do. And uh, our labs are up and running and uh, going full speed now. So we're, we're back to pretty much normal and uh, are making progress on the cancer research side too. You know, obviously the news of this week with Pfizer and others being involved with that, it's still a process. We're not all the way there yet. It's going to take some time. Just for a layperson's standpoint, if you're talking to somebody about me about, oh, this is going to be over with soon, it's still a process that's going to take some time to, before we're, we're really back to normal, even if all this works out well. Would that be a fair assessment at this point? That's a, a definitely a fair assessment. I mean, we're going through a spike right now. As we move indoors, you know, influenza goes up. This virus is no different. It uh, is transmitted by droplets mainly. And uh, so as we get closer together and indoors, you're going to see the rates go up a little bit. So it's going to, it's going to be a little difficult. We have to be extremely careful, I think, in, uh, in really working with uh, groups to keep the sizes down if we have to meet with them. I think using virtual meetings like we're doing, yeah. it's much better to be with you and sitting across yeah. from you and talking to you. But I'm, you know, we can't do that these days. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit tough, I think, but the vaccines are coming. I mean, the Pfizer vaccine and that initial report of a 90% response rate is pretty darn amazing. That's like measles. Yeah, That's, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're really gonna get ourselves immune to this virus. Uh, we all get the flu shot uh, and that's only 40 to 50% effective. So that, but we go and get them and it mm -hmm. really helps us. 
So this vaccine, once we really get it finalized, once we're sure it's safe and once we're sure it's really efficacious, meaning the FDA reviews all the data, then, you know, the vaccine will be out and, you know, I'm going to be first in line to get it. Of course, I won't <laughs> be first in line because I'm, I'm not at that point where I have to, uh, to, to, to be in the first group of, uh, you know, re first responders and things that will get the vaccine. But, you know, I'm very confident it's going to be a great vaccine and everyone should avail themselves of it as rapidly as uh, it can be distributed and available to the general public. All right. Uh, one, uh, we'll end on a, on a positive note. Your relationship with Tyler Trent and the Trent uh, family, and, and it, it has been just two short years since a, a lot of that, too, but a huge impact, not only on, on the Center for Cancer Research, but also cancer research everywhere. And it's a great, you know, not only Tyler, but his parents, uh, just an unbelievable family, um, unbelievable friends to the uh, center as well. Tell us about how that relationship has continued and, and the importance of that. Well, you know, Tyler was an exceptional young man. Yes, uh, he was. He uh, came on campus after uh, defeating the disease for a short time. And so we heard about his story and we're really intrigued and uh, talked with Tyler. And we have a committee that you're a member of uh, that is called the Director's Advancement Board. And uh, we, our board really felt like we needed to have student representation on the board. And so we talked to Tyler and wow, he was so, so powerful in his thought processes. And uh, the board, you know, invited him to become a member. He attended uh, a meeting uh, and wow, he was so insightful. Uh, it, it, his contributions were really tremendous at that meeting. And, we were all very impressed. And then he had a recurrence and really started battling the disease. He did call in and participate by phone in an additional meeting. But, you know, we really developed a relationship with him over time, got to know his mother and father and brothers. And uh, it was, you know, really a family affair. I visited him a number of times and uh, he was always very appreciative, as were his parents. And uh, really just interested in Purdue football and Purdue yeah, basketball yeah, no and you know it came up that uh, he was pretty sick and but he wanted to see that Ohio State game yeah and uh, our center uh, shares a, a suite in the football stadium so we worked with the Trent family and athletics I mean athletics was fantastic in providing transportation and everything for him and ways for him to get in with his uh, wheelchair and all that. And they, they made him honorary captain of that game. He was in our suite and man, that was the greatest game I think <laughs> I've seen. Yeah, uh, hard to beat. Now more, uh, gosh, I hope he gets back this yeah. week, but who knows? Uh, if we get him back on the field with Bell and we're, we're gonna be unstoppable. But uh, back to Tyler, I mean, Tyler was uh, honorary captain, he went down on the field afterwards and, you know, the rest is history. I think, uh, I, again, the Director's Advancement Board uh, saw how exciting it was for Tyler and they started the endowment and committed to support the endowment that is now the Tyler Trent uh, Research Endowment. So that board uh, did a great job and really appreciated him so much. And, and I think our research, of course, will benefit from it. That's what Tyler wanted. His dream was to raise a million dollars. We've already got 2.5. And that's just at Purdue. He's also raised money uh, at IU and uh, at, for the V Foundation. And they now have their own uh, foundation too. So, I mean, Tyler, it's, it's amazing what, what that young man was able to do for cancer. No, yeah, no question. And it, and it continues, his legacy lives on uh, with respect to that. Well, Tim, thanks so much for your time. And uh, we'll look forward to tomorrow's virtual 5K. Again, if you're interested, uh, we'll have a tab on our site, but also just, just uh, all you have to do is search for Purdue Virtual 5K and you'll find the, the website as well. You can sign up, donate and make a difference. And we hope 
we'll be back this this spring and if not we'll be back as soon as we can be for our next race uh, it's been a lot of a uh, very very important uh, event for us I want to thank our sponsors also for today's show triple x on the hill but on the level of purdue tradition since 1929 hilton garden inn tomorrow's a big day stay at hdi tonight and state farm agent trent johnson at trendismyagent.com tim thanks so much for your time really enjoyed having to, having you and uh, want to also thank Gordon and Scott from WLFI for all that they do to make this show possible. We'll see you next week as we uh, preview. It'll be a game day as Purdue previews. Uh, we preview Purdue, Minnesota, which will be a Friday night game uh, in Minneapolis. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you.